Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel and I really don't know why it took me this long to check out the Osmo Pocket. It's been out for a while, a lot of people love it, uh, even a buddy of mine, Joshua Vergara, talks great things about it, took it with him to Japan. So there's a lot of cool things going on with it, but I've never had a chance to play or even try to even check out the Osmo Pocket. Well, we finally have it here in the house, I decided to pick one up uh, and uh, I'm, I'm really surprised this little guy can do so much. <laughs> this is TK, let's check it out. And subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you're always notified whenever we put out new videos on the channel. Now the first thing obviously is I'm not doing an unboxing here. This is just the packaging that I got mine in. Uh, I did pick it up used so that's one thing I wanted to uh, share with you guys. Um, I went on eBay and I find it very gently used one uh, meaning almost not used uh, and then I picked it up directly from uh, directly there from eBay. Now everything in the box for the most part is pretty much what you normally get with it if you picked it up yourself. There's the USB-C, the USB-A cable and that's mostly just to charge and data connect there if you need it. Uh, we do have a lanyard there that you're able to put on the actual pocket so you don't have it lost. Uh, they do include two adapters. There's a lightning and a USB-C adapter. Let's go ahead and do that. And these are the two connectors that you'd use to connect to your phone. That's one thing that you want to keep in mind is that the Osmo Pocket does not have Wi-Fi built into it. Um, it does pair over Bluetooth, but it doesn't transfer any information over Bluetooth. So the only way to get data off of the Osmo Pocket is either by removing the SD card, if I can find it right there, which I actually did put in one of mine, or you slide off this piece, which is a cover, and then slide in uh, the adapter for your corresponding device. Now I'm using this over on Android. So obviously if you're using it on an iPhone, you'd use the Lightning adapter, but it's compatible with both. Um, and the uh, Osmo Mimo application is available for both uh, environments. Other than that, we got the instruction manual, just some booklets here, and of course the carrying case. And the carrying case is really nice. It's lined up and it actually does have some nice protections for the actual Osmo. And of course we have lint. And uh, the basic thing is when you turn it on, let's go ahead and turn on the Osmo Pocket, give it a second, it adjusts or recalibrates the gimbal itself and it just turns on right away. Let's go ahead and shut it off. And then once you shut it off, it goes into docking mode. You notice right there, and then you just put it in, close it, and the case has an opening just to keep it open. So if you, let's say you want to do this, you want to put it in and then you want to plug it in directly to your phone in the case, you could do that. Or of course, what most people end up doing is they slide this off. So let's go ahead and take the gimbal out and then put it in in reverse as it does support both in regular or reverse. And if you notice right there, it's more protected. It's flush around the actual, uh, the actual casing. And of course, uh, we'll do it this way. And then it does fit ever so slightly inside and then covers it up with the actual case. And this is a great case. I'll show you guys some other options that I'm thinking about, but right now this is for the most part uh, the best option that I have. And there we have it, the Osmo Pocket ready to go, start shooting in literally less than 10 seconds. So I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're up. Out of the case, on, and ready to go. Um, and there's obviously different options that we can go and use in here. So let's go ahead and take this out real quick. I just want to share with you guys real quick. We'll put the adapter here. Uh, the interface is actually pretty nice. It's very simple. The screen is kind of on the small side. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. A lot of information is crammed into this screen. So you have the battery level that's putting it positioned right there. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. There's a lot of information here. So we have the battery level that's on the top right. We do have a little bit of a jog dial here that gives us the ability of controlling the gimbal. Not so I would say not the easiest thing to figure out, also not the easiest thing to actually even get on the right touch. Right now I'm looking at it straight, but if there's too much light, you don't really see it where it is and you can't really have a, a good time. So let's say I can put it into this way, you can notice right there, it's moving it up and it is very nice and very steady. Uh, it does not work with side to side, it just goes up and down. Uh, we have the size of the uh, SD card that we have, how much we have left on it, as well as the format of the video with 4K at 50 frames per second. And of course, uh, pro mode if I want to be able to initiate that, I just tap that in there. Swiping from the left gives us access to the recent stuff. So this is basically if I wanted to look at this image. And of course, uh, I can actually scroll through images, videos, and so on. I've been using it for the last week, so it's not literally out of the box. That's one thing you want to keep in mind. Uh, swiping from the top, not much happens there uh, other than basically just getting into settings. So that you can swipe over here. You can go to quality, uh, regular settings, uh, image. Of course, turning on uh, auto focusing, and then of course, turning on pro mode if you'd like it. And of course, the brightness of the display and then setting up the different modes. Although uh, that one actually is the waterproof case. If I swipe down for up from the bottom, we have also some nice options there. So we have the ability of doing the flip the camera over. So that goes into selfie mode. It's right there. Now we'll flip it back. And of course, we have the ability of cycling through different options, centering it. So it just goes straight center. And then of course, if you're doing an action shot. Uh, so by default, it had tilt locked. We have to uh, FPV. And of course, follow mode and then of course, tilt lock. Those are the three modes that you have the ability of using. 
Uh, tilt lock just basically kind of focuses where it just stays straight and then you can go up and down, but it just basically kind of focuses on the actual image in front of us. Uh, and then on the right side, we can swipe between different video or photo modes. So we have video options here. We have go to photo. We also can go to slow-mo, the time-lapse option. We'll swipe up. And of course, the panorama. Uh, pano is really nice. It does an actual automatic panorama, which means it turn when you turn it on, it'll take a picture of all three sections and then stitch it up for you and makes it very easy to use. Uh, of course, if I want to basically go into video, let's go to photo real quick. Yeah, there you notice it says camera. I'm able to actually also go into options. And if I go into video, let's go click video. And it's right there, video options. You can go in there and customize it exactly to what you want. Um, we swipe one more time from video and you can get the resolution of the video. So you notice right there, 4K, we can go all the way up to 60 frames per second if we'd like, uh, or you can stay at 50 frames per second. Of course, we can do 1080p, 16 by nine, as that's the resolution. Even though this is a one by one, uh, it is a 1080, it is basically set to 16 by nine aspect ratio. Uh, and it's the same thing if you wanna go into photo, uh, I can swipe up one more time, you can change it to 16 by nine, at, you know, and then basically set the countdown when you're starting to take a picture so you know exactly when the image is gonna happen. Uh, and you can also set it down so you don't have any shake in the hands. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty simple. The interface is very, very easy. Let's go ahead and put the adapter one more time and show you guys how it looks like on the phone. And then all we have to do right now is turn on the camera, plug it in, give it a second. It's gonna recognize it uh, on my phone at least. It almost looks like it's running on a, uh, let's say, a connecting a, dr a drive to it. I'm not gonna actually even do anything other than just turn it on. And then of course, now we have access to the entire screen that we had here connected over here. Uh, keep in mind, it does actually have enough of, uh, weight enough on it to, uh, to feel like that it actually does have some extra weight here. So I would never just hold it like this all the time. I would always hold it together as a two-handed device once you connect your phone to it. Um, there are accessories that you can buy that will help you with the uh, stability of this so that you don't damage either A, the USB-C port or the actual adapter and the Osmo. But the main benefit of course here is the ability of actually controlling everything on the Osmo from our phone and of course getting everything set up correctly. So we'll go ahead and set it up here and as I mentioned to you guys we have the option of switching over here so we have the action shots or right there FPV mode, follow mode and of course tilt lock mode. Um, and then you can go back in here, you can go home, back into the Mimo app, the, the countdown that we saw before, we can set our ISO, our exposure, of course. The gallery app is very nice, and this makes it very easy to see what's on the actual device uh, and see it exactly live. Um, without this, playback on the actual Osmo is a little bit hard, as it also doesn't have a speaker, so you can't really hear anything. Uh, we have the different modes that are sitting here. We have story mode, panel mode, photo, video, and of course, uh, slow motion here. You can go in there, set it up, of course, time lapse. And then of course hyperlapse, which is nice. And that's the ability of basically doing that really nice zooming in kind of shots and going straight through options. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. And of course, switching over between the front and the back facing camera very, very easily. Now, the other thing you can also do here is the ability of going into this option where say, see it here, right there, you can customize the speed. Um, under the three dots, we have the ability of setting up the capacity for the SD card, formatting it, and of course going about. Uh, you can also set the gimbal easy and of course um, calibration if you're having problems with it. And under video, of course, we can go set up basically the basic setup, which essentially is just the file format, the hertz as far as the refresh rate. Of course, if you want to be able to turn on the grid for better composition, so you can turn it on, you'll notice right there, there's the uh, the three by three. And then of course, grid plus diagonal. Personally, the grid is most more than enough for me. And of course, overexposure alert, this is really nice. And as it shows the histogram there, you can see where the focus level and what is overexposed actually in the image that you're looking at right there. And of course, focus right now is on AFC. You can go to the AFS or AFC. Um, and other than that, I think it's pretty much just easy, very simple, and then we can go ahead and click away. Um, we do have the ability of controlling the gimbal with this little joystick here, which is very simple. You can buy a separate joystick that's available as an accessory to the Osmo, so you don't have to actually use your smartphone all the time. Let me show you guys real quick some quick samples that I've taken with the Osmo. Uh, and one of the main things I really appreciate about the Osmo is it actually takes decent pictures as well. I was surprised with the image quality that it was able to take. Um, and it actually did a, a decent job uh, just taking this with my son. I was hanging out with the family, and of course I was walking around just using it. Um, share with you guys some images here, <laughs> some of the stuff we were eating. Uh, we had some tamales uh, over on the weekend from the farmer's market and my son was having a nice chocolate croissant. It's just, it's really, really nice. And it's shooting in 4K is always appreciated because you can always crop in later. And this actually performed quite well um, in good lighting. And also when you're playing it on your phone, you have the ability of listening to the entire audio, but you could see his tie dye shirt right there. It was so nice and colorful and they were just really, really nice. Uh, so this is a three axis gimbal which means we will see some movement up and down in the video. 
um, and there are options as well on the market to be able to give us uh, better video uh, stabilization as a fourth axis with using a, like a controller or a handheld option. So the initial impressions of the Osmo Pocket is uh, very, very positive. I really like the form factor. I like the ease of use that it comes with it. Like I said, literally pop it out of the case, take it out and push the button and literally less than 10 seconds, it was roughly about eight seconds, you're ready to shoot and it's sitting right there. So let's go ahead and switch over to the Osmo Pocket. And the process is extremely simple, literally less than eight seconds to turn it on and start shooting. That's something that I would say almost even some smartphones can't get there fast enough. Now, yes, you can open it up and go open up the camera, but then you have to switch over to the video. So it's about the same. But the main reason why I decided to actually pick up the Osmo Pocket on top of the fact that Josh was using it was the fact that my Mate 20 Pro, even though it's a great phone and it does great in photography, um, as far as video, I always felt like it was lacking some uh, basically quality, the same level of way it performs and pictures. So for traveling, I wanted something small enough that actually kind of offset the downsides that I had with my Mate 20 Pro. Uh, I generally don't take a lot of video with it. And if I did take video, it's usually for very short, uh, not walking, uh, not any kind of nature stuff. The other thing is the uh, Mate 20 Pro does not actually carry the ability of doing 4K at 60 frames per second. It's capped at 4K at 30. So having the Osmo in some kind of a small form factor like this makes it very nice. Now, keep in mind, uh, the microphones that I'm using right now are the built-in microphones. There are other accessories that I was gonna start covering on this uh, but overall as far as what I'm seeing right now it's great it's easy to use simple to actually configure and very easy to use it in auto mode and pro mode which has it, it has actually a lot of options to be able to set exposures uh, white balance and also just basically take some nice night shots with it which I'm going to go ahead and try uh, and try to do some videos for you guys on that uh, like and subscribe as usual thank you very much for the support and hopefully you, you guys have also checked out the Osmo Pocket if you have let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think about it since it's been out for actually quite a while now. A lot of people have covered it and I'm very happy to be joining the team finally. This is TK. Thank you very much for the support. Again, I will see you guys in the next video.